In this video, I'm partly in a tree and my car is broken. Cruise control packed up today, which was unpleasant. I had to operate a throttle pedal by myself. And uh, the brake lights um, don't seem to be working either. I can't really test the switch. I haven't got any of the right equipment, but that bulb probably shouldn't be there. So um, let's see if we can salvage that situation for a start off. This is a bit old school, isn't it? You've got to take the lamp cluster off to get at the bulbs. Right, is that now free? Well, this is really, really practical. I had to consult the um, manual before I broke something. So yeah, a little retaining screw is off there. Also doubles as a curry hook. And then you've got to undo this bugger. I, I don't like cars where you can't replace bulbs unless you use tools. Lamp is off, bulb is still inside it, and the um, bulb holder appears a little bit cracked, which might be why the bulb fell out. Also, please ignore the rust. It's not serious, honest. Um, but yeah, I need to get the bulb out. That's gonna be fun. We, we need to fix the uh, Fairmont, and uh, we have come to Tridon. Um, due to um, handy um, hub nutter influence. And uh, we have got a brake light switch. It's an unusual design. It sort of goes on the pedal shaft by the look of it. There's a big R clip that holds it on. So um, hopefully we can fit that and the brake lights will work and the cruise control will work again. And um, also very kindly been provided with new wiper blades because the ones fitted aren't superb. So um, that'll be a handy upgrade. And uh, even a pack of cable ties, because you can fix almost everything with cable ties. So yeah, now we need to get some bulbs, because I think the bulbs are playing up a bit as well. And uh, see if we can track down a bulb holder, maybe. So um, fun times. But yeah, thanks, Tridon. I feel just like uh, Marty and Moog. I'm in a super cheap auto and uh, buying some bulbs uh, and a bulb holder. Um, I was thinking we we're going to have to go to a scrapyard and find one, but I think we can make that work uh, to fix the broken bulb holder. Uh, so then all should be good, but yeah, super cheap auto. The only difference is I think they pay Mighty Car Mods for not paying me. I need to go and buy these at a till. Right, I'm at another Hubnus's house because tools! Amazing. And um, I have my bulb holder. We've managed to identify which one is the brake. So that wire is the brake. The other one is the um, tail light feed. Interesting that they're black and the earth's red. I'm not sure why that would be the case, but nonetheless. And we've worked out that the brown here is the tail light and this stripy one is the brake light feed. So we should be able to cut those wires, attach those wires, have a working bulb holder. I suppose it might be an idea to see if the bulb holder actually fits the um, tail light um, we have. It is a universal one. Uh, will it go in? Probably should have tested that before, but um, I'm not convinced it is going to go in. Uh, oops. That might have been a bit of an oversight. Why would you do that, Ford? Maybe we can cut a little recess so that will, will actually go in. Because if we can't lock that in, it's not going to be a lot of use. Rubbish. Uh, stage one is complete. Uh, we have a working tail light. I can't test the brake light yet because the brake light system isn't working. So um, I now need to fit this arrangement and um, I'll show you why that's going to be fun. So this is the um, Ford arrangement and uh, that switch sits on the shaft that the pedal operates on. Uh, I think it's held in by a big arc clip or something and uh, yeah, it doesn't work in a way I'd expect I mean if you look at this one it's not entirely clear what's um, obviously the switchy bit is inside the pedal uh, or inside the switch so there must be a cam or something that operates on it pushes that slider along um, all a bit peculiar but I'll see if I can get the old one out first uh, I'm not gonna try and video that because I've got to get myself in there there is no room for you as well 
Now I've managed to get the old um, one out and the new one is currently wired up for testing purposes and at first it wasn't working and that's when we discovered that the fuse was blown. Um, it's that one and uh, nick, nick the spare fuse off the board so um, that that is now working everything is functioning so it could be that I didn't have to replace the brake light switch but something could made that fuse blow and it could have been the brake light switch so as soon as we've got a new one wired up uh, I'm going to fit that back to the shaft there is the blown fuse just for your amusement just need to work out I, I think the switch probably goes on first and then that little green spacer and uh, yeah should all be good I'm very glad the manual is with this because the back of the fuse box contains no clues as to what any of these do uh, most manufacturers would put the um, fuse diagram on the back of the box but this has absolutely nothing so that's not helpful at all but at least we are getting somewhere and this is the ridiculous situation you find yourself in um, when you're trying to work on a brake light switch on a Ford Falcon or Fairmont AU. But I, I think we've got it working. I can now operate the pedal with my head and we seem to have um, brake lights. Hurrah! Well, we're sadly not out of the woods yet because it turns out this universal bulb holder is not universal enough for a Ford. Uh, it just will not fit. There is nothing we can do to make that fit. Uh, we could try and just cut all these bits off and just glue it in, but um, that doesn't sound ideal, I would suggest. So I think we're gonna go and have a quick look around, see if we can find a scrapyard that might have the loom in, because the wiring just comes into here on a big multi-plug. So we should be able to um, get a new wire if we're looking for Oh, that's just the, the grommet on the back there. Wish it all the wires pass through, so we might need the grommet as well, but I think that's part of it. So, um, yeah, let's go and try that. After much um, running around all over the place, um, we finally managed to find, um, this is actually a fair lane uh, with the um, slightly longer um, rear end, but uh, it has the same wiring by the look of it. So we've got some uh, bulb holders which aren't broken, these should be able to um, do the job. So yeah, thank you very much to Dean for bringing me all around Christchurch this morning in search of these. Now we can go and fit them and have a nice cup of tea and maybe some lunch. So we really have been all around the houses, but we finally got the loom. We've got good um, bulb holders and you can see it just wires in here. So I'm just gonna clip that in to there, which I might need both hands for. And then um, we'll give it a test. Indicator, reverse, tail light, brake light. And uh, yeah, tail light is illuminated as well. All of the good times. Button it up, jobs are good. Un. Huzzah! The good times are here again. Huzzah! Cruise control works again. Which means we can crack on with success brew. That's just a hub nutter trying to glue my headlining back in because it has got more and more saggy as this trip, trip has gone on. Um, I've had to stop driving along with the windows open because it tends to make it flap around and degrade all the more. And uh, it's not really always hot enough for the air conditioning. Oh, cheers, bird. Um, but um, we'll see. We're just letting it get tacky before we see if we can reattach it. And then we'll continue with tea variously and now uh, having fixed the falcon or fairmont sorry uh we are now in another hubnutter's home i say we me and my laptop because uh, i'm video editing with pedro look at little pedro pedro is mostly interested in the bird noise outside i think isn't that true pedro hey pedro the internet is looking at you Ooh, hello. Now you may recall earlier in this trip, I mentioned a Peugeot 404 I was hoping to see. Well, it's here and it's gonna start perfectly, isn't it? Yes, 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 it's gonna start perfectly. It hasn't been on the road for a very long time. Ah! 
There you go, that's most of the cylinders. Yeah, several cylinders, yeah. It's not quite all of them, but we'll take it. Will it move? We're having a slight issue with the brakes. The brakes are sticking on a bit. But there we go, it's rolling. That might be it, to be honest. But still, it moves. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, it's decided it's had enough. But yeah, Pininfarina styling looks rather like um, a BMC Farina because he just sold the same design to two different companies. But these things are rally winners. They won um, some of the toughest rallies um, before the World Rally Championship existed. Uh, they were sold in Argentina and places and some even had fuel injection. And uh, yeah, quite fascinating motors. Coney equipped. Yeah, it, it was at some point. And uh, yeah, I love it. I think it's great. I would love to own one, but in the UK, they have all rusted away. You can kind of see why, even in New Zealand, they rust. Oh. But if we look inside, oh, we've got a rev counter. Not a very revy engine, but quite a smart dashboard, I think, for the 1960s. No metal, it's, um, or maybe it is metal but it's coated to look a bit more plasticky. Um, column gear change, I have no idea what the pattern is on that, but um, it feels quite precise. So I'm gonna say that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I like, I like a lot. Uh, let's have a look at the engine if we can. And here is the engine bay. It's got the same sort of slant four engine as the Peugeot 505. Uh, I drove recently, which shows you how old that is. But this has another quirk. Whereas the 505 had the distributor going through the inlet manifold, on this, you'll see the carburetor goes straight into the head. And all the manifolding is inside the cylinder head, which is not something I've ever encountered before. That is quite peculiar. Uh, the headliner is definitely looking better. Uh, the sagging has gone away. I've got a bit of tape on that edge just because trying to get it to stick right on the edge is proving very very difficult but um yeah it's looking good uh, there's some sagging right above my head but we can't get in there with the glue and uh, it's all a bit mucky and cruddy there anyway so i'm not worrying about that that's just keeping it off my head for now that's all fine so it's all good and uh, you'll notice i'm recording this on a new camera uh, I have an Osmo action camera that I'm trying out, uh, so we'll see how that goes. I have some slight issues with the sound on it, it won't take an external microphone as easily as I'd hoped, but still, should lead to an improvement in production quality, hopefully. Not too much, it is hubnut still, after all. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, that's it for this episode. The Fairmont is now better, so that ends my Christchurch escapades. Uh, still a few road tests to come from the Christchurch area. But um, yeah, it should be good fun. Uh, so I should say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.